Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church. With another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Thank you so much for joining us as we continue the theme we began at the beginning of this week. Simple principle, and that is the bee. The bee that produces the stinger to hurt us is also the same bee that produces honey. And maybe that's why we have bees. We have bees because we want that honey, but they will sting you. And there's a lot of things in life that sting us, but that thing that stings us also is a thing that can produce something quite sweet. And we're seeing this pattern in Acts chapter 16 as we look at the life of the Apostle Paul as he is now in Europe. He had prayed at the beginning of the chapter to go to certain places, Mysia and Bithynia, and God would let him go there, but he ends up in Troyas. But there in Troyas, he meets a man named Luke who would become his physician and would later, later write the book of Luke and the book of Acts. What looked like a stinger was really something sweet was honey. He crosses over into Europe, into Philippi of Macedonia, expecting that he would find a lot of strong men who would, he would help to spread the gospel. Instead, he found some women who in the society of the patriarchal society of the apostle Paul were minimized and marginalized. But one of those women was a woman named Lydia. And she was the wealthiest woman around. And because Paul was kind to her and didn't judge her or prejudge her, well, God opened her heart to Paul because Paul was kind to her. And once God opened her heart, she opened up her home to Paul. And Paul's and Lydia's home will become the base of operations for Paul's ministry there in Philippi. We are told that as he was on his way to prayer meeting, that a slave girl who had a demon spirit uh, and her masters made a lot of money because she was able to uh, predict the future and assess things like who people are. And she assessed who Paul was and would follow Paul saying, these men are from God who teach us the path of salvation. And Paul delivers her from the demonic. And because he delivers her from the demonic, she no longer has the spirit of divination, is able to tell the future. And her owners, her masters, they lose profit because of it. When you bless people, sometimes you have to confront systems and policies that hurt people. And that's what Paul did. As a result of it, Paul was arrested. Uh, the, the slave owners who owned that unnamed slave girl appealed to racism and said, these Jews, these Jews, which was their way of saying these N-words are interfering with profit. And so we are told that they were arrested and they were beaten. And Acts chapter 16 and verse 19 tells us how severe the beating was. It says, but when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. They brought them to the magistrates and said, these men being Jews. So they're appealing. They didn't have to mention their, 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 their lineage or their origin. But they did that because they were they were appealing to racial nationalism. And it says these men being Jews exceedingly troubled our city and they teach customs which are not lawful for us being Romans to receive or observe. Then the multitudes rose up together against them and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And verse 23 says, and when they had laid many stripes on them, think of the, the, the whip of the slave master. So Paul understood what it means to be whipped like the slaves. This is all about slavery. You know, you hear a whole lot of stories and preachers preach about Paul praying in the Philippian jail at midnight, but you never deal with, many preachers never deal with, and teachers never deal with how Paul got to jail in the first place. He got to jail because he was against slavery. He was against exploitation, just like Martha King Jr. went to jail because Martha King Jr. and the civil rights leadership, men and women fighting against the exploitation of people. And slavery is a sin. Anytime that you steal someone else's 
labor, the profit they should be earning from their labor. The Bible clearly teaches that it's a sin and it is condemned throughout the Bible. Let me just read some scriptures to you. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 13 says, you shall not cheat your neighbor, nor rob him. The wages of him who is hired shall not remain with you all night until morning. My God says you're not supposed to keep somebody's wages all night. Well, they took our wages as enslaved people, black people as enslaved people, not only over the night, but for 246 years without a paycheck. And this is a quote unquote Christian nation that did this. Deuteronomy chapter 24 verses 14 and 15 says, you shall not oppress a hired servant who is poor and needy, whether one of your brethren or one of the aliens who is in your land within your gates. Each day you shall give him his wages and not let the sun go down on it, for he is poor and has set his heart on it. Least he cry out against you to the Lord and it be a sin to you to hold somebody's wages through slavery or through underpaying them, which our nation does by giving people $7, a little over $7 an hour, which is not a living wage. You're holding wages and the people who hold the wages uh, exploit the workers so that they can be the fat cats. And the Bible clearly says it's a sin. Job chapter 24 and verse 10 says, they go about patched and threadbare, even the hard workers go hungry. Stokely Carmichael said, if working hard got you ahead, then black folks should own America. But just because you work hard does not mean you get ahead if you don't have a system of justice that pays people a living just wage. Look at Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 13. It says, woe to him who builds his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by injustice, who uses his neighbor's service without wages and gives him nothing for his work. James 5 and 4 reads this. Indeed, the wages of the laborer who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out. And the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. And what you have going on here in Philippi is you have this woman who is a slave woman who is being exploited. And Paul has helped deliver her from the slavery and the people who have exploited her are have lost their profit. And that is that is what Paul did in Philippi. And a result of it, as a result of it, Paul is arrested. Paul is severely beaten, severely beaten. He and Silas are put in stocks in prison. No, the ACLU didn't come to help him. The NAACP didn't appeal. Black Lives Matter wasn't there to say this is an unjust sentence. What has happened to Paul is unjust. Uh, it's, it's a terrible situation for Paul. But I want you to continue to read with me. Go up to verse 22. Verse 22 reads, the, the multitudes rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. Verse 23 reads and when they had laid many stripes on them they threw them into the prison commanding the jailer to keep them securely having received such a charge he put them into the inner prison so not they're not only beaten down but they're put in solitary confinement and they're, they're they are in stocks they're in stocks my god in handcuffs if you will but at midnight Wait, 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 just stop here. But all this bad stuff has happened to them. They've been beat. Their backs are bloodied. They're hurting. They're in solitary confinement with no representatives, no one to help them. They're, they, they're, they're, they're in handcuffs. But, but, anytime you see the word but in a, in a passage in the Bible, it's a conjunction, which means contrast. Bad things happen, but look at how he responds. It, it, it's a turning point in the story. You think the story is going to go one way. You think Paul is going to be defeated. You think Paul's going to be finished. You think Paul's going to be complaining. But 
at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. How can you sing at midnight? How, how can you sing when you've been beat, you've been beat up? How's it possible to sing to the Lord to still maintain your faith in God when you've experienced these beat ups of life? Well, Paul has matured. And, and one of the signs of maturity is how you respond to how you've been beat up. Listen, Paul's been beat up and Paul has been beaten down but he's not been beaten back. He still has his faith in God and he's singing because he believes that although it's a stinger, there's something honey, some honey that's going to come out of this. And this is what Paul believes. The reason why Paul can sing at midnight is because he believes that this beat up and beat down in a strange way is a validation of his ministry, that his ministry is being validated. Sometimes the way you can best determine if you're on the right track is that people are beating you up. If you're not bothering Satan, it's, you know, if you're not running into him, it's because you're probably moving in the same direction of him as him. It is a strange validation of his ministry that he's being beat up. And the fact that you're being beat up sometimes, not only is it a strange validation of Paul's ministry, but it's a wonderful indication of his maturity. And sometimes God may allow us to experience the beat up to see how mature we are. Paul is praying and singing, Paul and Silas, to the Lord with beat up backs because their situation, they can sing and pray because it's a validation of their ministry. If everybody likes you, this probably not standing up for something of its significance and importance. So it's a strange validation of their ministry. It is a wonderful indication of their maturity because of how they're handling it. And it's a powerful captivation of their mission, which is to reach people. And this is, listen, here is question. Is this the stinger or is this honey? Well, where's the honey in this? Beat up, in stocks, they're singing, but I don't think see anything sweet coming out of this, right? Would you look again at verse 25? Look at it carefully. And that's why you got, when you look at the word of God, you got to look at sometimes some things that don't seem important, but are critically important. It says, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Notice they were singing to God. When we're in worship, you're singing to God, praying to God. It says, and the prisoners were listening to them, which means that Paul's mission, remember, where, remember when they, if this is not the black community, because remember when Paul first got to Philippi, he only encountered what? Women. And so far, he's only been encountered by two groups of women. Who are the two groups of women? The two groups of women is Lydia and the slave girl. Now, Paul is finally finding the brothers. It's the first time you find Paul coming in contact with brothers. And where are the brothers? in jail. Where are the brothers, black brothers today because of mass incarceration? In jail. So he finally comes in contact with some brothers in jail. Here's the honey. The reason why God has allowed Paul to go to jail is because Paul needs to be there to help the brothers. God wants you in a position, Paul, to help the brothers. That's the honey. And sometimes God will put you in some bad situations because God needs a Christian witness in bad situations. That's the honey. So they're praising God. And you know what? Let me say this about praising God as we close. You don't praise God because you feel good. You feel good because you praise God. You don't praise God because, oh, I feel good, so therefore I'm going to praise God. The Bible says I will bless the Lord at 
at all times. So the t there are two times when you should praise God, when you feel like it and when you don't feel like it. And you don't praise God because you feel good. Paul didn't feel good. You feel good because you praise God. Because it takes your focus off your bloody back and it puts your focus on God who sent Jesus, who also had a bloody back. He was in, afflicted with wounds on his back like a slave too, and he's our savior. And it reminds us when we praise God that God is still in control. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, and the brothers in the jail heard Paul and Silas, which explains why there were no brothers out there by the riverside with Lydia. They all in jail. What a word. Well, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for what we've learned today and the lessons about how you don't want anyone exploited. Help us to be Christians that take the word of the first century and make it applicable to the 21st century. As Paul interfered with the exploitation of people, help us to do the same as Christians. As Paul had a prison ministry that reached out to the men who were in jail, help us to do the same thing. In Christ Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you real good. Thank you for being with me for another point, powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, I love to extend an invitation to you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Every, everyone needs a church home. So reach out to us, new start at ssclive.org. Peace and blessings to you. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day the rest of the day, and I'll see you again tomorrow. But until then, don't forget during COVID-19, stay safe, stay sane, and don't forget to wear your mask. I'll see you later. Take care. Be blessed.